Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is a very positive omen. It can mean that your material wishes will be met perhaps to a degree that you would not have thought possible, and that in general, things will be going exceedingly well for you. Security in all forms is at a high ebb. General, the Ten of Pentacles in general says that you have a great deal to be thankful for. Relationships of all kinds, finance, health, all should be going well. Consider how you got to this happy situation. Make the best of it, and be sure to share what you have, even if it's only a kind word spoken to someone in need. We get back what we give out. Work, a raise in pay or a better position may come to you out of the blue when the Ten of Pentacles appears. You are very likely to enjoy this new situation. This is also an excellent omen when you are looking for work. Just the right position, at just the right pay, is likely to be made yours if you keep trying. Under no circumstances should you give up. Things are on the upswing, even if you see no concrete signs of this yet. Love, the Ten of Pentacles is a very happy indicator with regard to love. If you are currently committed, this card can mean that you will move to the next level, living together, engagement, marriage, childbirth, all can be indicated by this card. For a time, you are likely to have a peaceful, happy period in your love life. Enjoy it, and make sure your beloved knows how much they mean to you. If you're not in a relationship, this card can mean that a new love may come into your life so fast it makes your head spin. Be open. Finances, when the Ten of Pentacles appears, the answer to any financial question is likely to be a resounding and upbeat yes. Money should be flowing better than it has done for a while. You should have more than enough money to meet your needs. Invest in your future and save some of what is coming in now. Health, as with any other category with the Ten of Pentacles, the health-related news should be very good. You will have at least a short period of time that you are feeling exceptionally well and upbeat about your future. Give thought to how you may support and continue this good health. Spirituality this will be a time of peace, joy, and prosperity for you. How will you share this? How can you deepen your spiritual growth and exploration when you are already happy and doing well? Revel in these good feelings. Share them in whatever way you can. Record them so that when times get difficult again, as life is always a cycle, you can refer back to this happy time and remember that happiness will come again. Tarot History The history of the tarot is shrouded in mystery. Very little in the way of concrete information is known about its origin although many things have been written about it. We will probably never know the truth as fact and fiction seem to be irrevocably mixed nowadays. The tarot originated in northern Italy in the early 15th century, sometime between 1420 to 1440. Despite the fact that it is often attributed to originating from China, Egypt, India, or Morocco to name just a few there is absolutely no evidence that this is the case. Nor, as is often quoted, is there any evidence whatsoever that the tarot was brought to Europe by the Romanis? The name tarot is often attributed to being Egyptian, Hebrew, or Latin. This is not the case. The earliest names are all Italian in origin. The cards were originally called Carte de Triumphi. Around 1530 the word Taraki began to be used to differentiate them from a new game of triumphs that was in vogue at the time. The etymology of this new word is unknown. The German variant was known as Tarak and the French Tarot. 
The symbolism for the tarot is drawn from the culture of medieval and Renaissance Europe. The tarot subjects are distinctive to European Christendom. The symbolism does not come from Egypt or any of the other exotic locales often mentioned. It is often stated that modern-day playing cards evolved from the tarot. This is not the case. Modern-day playing cards came to Europe courtesy of Islam. They were an adaptation of the Islamic Mamluk cards. They appeared quite suddenly in many different European cities between 1375 and 1378. These early cards had suits of cups, swords, coins, and polo sticks, and courts consisting of a king and two male underlings. The tarot adds the fool, the trumps, and a set of queens to this system. Sometime before 1480, the French introduced cards with the now familiar suits of hearts, clubs, spades, and diamonds. The Joker is not original to either the early form of modern day cards, or to the tarot, but instead originated in the USA around 1857 and was used as a wild card in poker as well as the highest trump in euchre. It is also often stated that the Catholic and Protestant churches outlawed the tarot and all who used it in an effort to stamp out so called heretical teachings. This is not the case. The Inquisition documented what the Church considered as evidence of heresy in great detail. The Tarot was not even mentioned. After the Reformation less controversial images for the Pope and Papess were substituted by card makers as the Church had objected to the original images. It is often said that the Tarot was not used as a divination tool prior to 1781. The tarot was used as early as the 16th century to compose poems describing personality characteristics. There is historical evidence that in one case at least these verses were presented as relating to the person's fate. In other words divination. Divinatory meanings were assigned to the tarot in Bologna in the early 1700s and this is the first unambiguous evidence of tarot divination. Ordinary playing cards were connected with divination as early as 1487. It is not unreasonable to think that the tarot was also. The tarot has often been attributed with being a pillar of Western esoterica occultism. This is certainly not the case. The first occult writers to discuss the tarot were Court de Gabellin and the Comte de Mellet in 1781. The tarot was not mentioned in any occult work for the first 350 years of its existence. The terms Major Arcana, Minor Arcana, High Priestess, and Hierophant are anachronistic when referring to the older tarot decks. The historically appropriate terms are the Trumps and the Fool, the Suit Cards, Popes or Popes, and Pope. Likewise pentacles and wands are relatively recent substitutions for the traditional suit names of coins and staves or batons. The original Italian titles of the cards were in some cases different from the later French titles that have become familiar to us through the Tarot de Marseille and its descendants. Also, the ordering of the trumps varied considerably in Italy where the cards originated it is not known which ordering is the earliest one. Even the number of cards in the deck varied a great deal. So care should be used in making statements about the original meaning of the cards based on the familiar titles and ordering. Many believe that the Waitsmith Tarot is the original, standard, or most authentic tarot deck in existence. This is absolutely untrue. The Waitsmith slash Rider Waite deck was created in 1909, not even 100 years ago making it a relative newcomer in the almost 600 year history of the tarot. There is actually no definitive version of the tarot.